it's my turn to demo today. And we've been sharing so many great Halloween projects this month. I'm feeling like I've really been behind the curve on Halloween. And Halloween was a different experience for me in my house because my mother, Aline, would make the girls create crafts in preparation for Halloween that we had to give to every house we went to. So we weren't just going out and trick-or-treating. We had to leave them a craft. So uh, Halloween was more about working and creating for me. And Heidi can jump in and talk about these stories, too. One of the projects I remember that I actually enjoyed making, and it was really fun when you make one or two, but when you have to make 50, because that's how many houses you're going to, it gets to be quite a bit for little kids. But you know how you used to take the wire hangers and the bump chenille, not the regular chenille stems, but the hanks of the bump chenille, and you'd wrap it around the wire hanger, and you'd make a really beautiful hanger that, that women would hang these nice outfits on. Well, we would have to make those for Halloween, so when we went trick-or-treating, we would give them gifts. So that's one of my memories of Halloween. So I thought, boy, I need to jump in here and get into the Halloween spirit. And so I am not making a covered hanger today because it's really hard to find that bump chenille anymore. But what I thought I would do is I was in the mood for embossing. You know, I've been doing this for, I get hooked on a craft. And um, I've been doing this for a couple of weeks with the embossing. We tried the embossing on the Aline's Burnt Brown bag technique. And so I thought, well, of course, we talked about what would it look like just on brown bag and not actually adding the glue and burning it and then trying to emboss it. So I thought, well, you could just make a garland of birds. And I know it's supposed to be crows or ravens, and this is a sparrow, but this is about just about how deep that I get into to this. So let me change over to my, my craft cam, and then I'll show you how to create the bird. So as I mentioned, the base for this is brown bag. And so you just, when you go to the store, you know, these days you need to ask for brown bags because they're not so easily given out. And I always take my eco bags with me. So Sometimes I casually forget them so I can get a new brown bag. Of course, you can buy craft paper, you can use lunch bags, but those grocery store bags are really uh, the, the nice weight. So I just cut them all open, use every scrap that I can, and then cut them to the size that I need to create whatever it is that I am cutting out. And this is a technique for gluing that Sister Heidi taught us, as you know, and I'm using my Aline's Tacky Glue just because I have it here on my desk and I love it. I can always trust that it's going to hold. I know that everyone has their favorites with their, their glues and there are different types of glues that will hold. And using, this is Heidi's technique, using a, an expired card, credit card. This was a rebate card that I used up. You just spread your glue out. It's really easy to do it this way because you're not having to get your fingers into it and you're not having to use a brush. So you could use a cardboard squeegee or just use these plastic squeegees. I like to use about four thicknesses of the brown bag for this. I found that that gives it some nice stability when you are creating. And I just realized I want to cut this one more time here. Um, so you'll find what you prefer as far as thickness. So glue those four layers together. Now, once you've glued these together, you can use your fingers just to squeegee it out and make them smooth, or you can use a brayer and run your brayer over it. If you do get any glue on your brayer, be sure and wipe it off with a wet wipe right away. So glue that, set it aside, 
and uh, let them dry overnight. I found if I used these pieces too soon, when I put them through the cutter and the embosser, that glue will ooze out, and it you can clean it up, but it's a lot of work. So just let those sit overnight. I'm using my Sizzix Big Shot to cut with today, and I just have a regular Sizzix uh, die, and this is the Sparrow. It's called Bird Sparrow right here. And so I'm going to put my die down. I want to be sure and line this up, and I have to put it at a bit of an angle the way this little bird design is. Lay the cutting pad on the top, and then put it through my big shot. You're going to see it come out the back here. And there you have your design. So, of course, you can use any die design that you'd like to. But what I found is these birds, of course, are very, very versatile because you can you can uh, color them in many different ways, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So now you can use your Big Shot to do your embossing, but I have my Texture Boutique here. And using the Texture Folder, again from Sizzix, and I like to take this folder and actually line up the design so that the bird's face has some swirls on it. And so move it around exactly where you want that design. For some deep embossing, I am using the, uh, the shim that goes with these pads in the folder. I'm going to turn this around and crank it through my Texture Boutique. And so these are real cute just in the natural brown bag. And you can see, and what I'm going to do now is actually bring my camera in a little bit closer so that you can see some of the details of this. So what you want to do, as I've done, is four layers of brown bag. And cut your design. And then put your embossing, and it's beautiful on both sides. This is really pretty, just the way it is. But there are a couple of other things that I tried. Of course, if you want to add some black to it, like I did. <laughs> Let me find out where my center is here. <laughs> and now my camera doesn't want to cooperate. Let me see if I can get it to refocus here and show you some really close detail. So what I've done on this one is I've just run my ink pad over that embossing. And you can see it picks up that design really beautifully. So I will do that on this one here. And just leave it flat on the tabletop and just run it over the top. And of course, you can punch these to create your garland. It's real easy. Use your crop a dial and crunch, punch right in to uh, where you want the eye to go. And also put a hole towards the tail. And it's that easy. Now, if you also want to create some other looks, you can, for your final layer, you can glue. You know how Lisa was talking earlier about recycling her greeting cards? Well, this was a card that I received and that had Believe Silver stamped in it. So I thought, wouldn't that be pretty? Of course, this looks more uh, inspired. You can do these for weddings. These birds would be really pretty for weddings, doing wedding garland. This is where I glued a layer of my eco embellishment paper on top. Now this was the paper that I was using a couple weeks ago that I dye and I stitch and it's leftover papers from other projects. You can of course use your scrapbook paper also. This is the 
paper where you can sand back and just catch the edges of that embossing to reveal the core of the color in between. So there's lots of different ways that you can use these birds for the holidays. I decided to try one in red. So have fun with recycling your brown bags. Use your dies and your embossing folders and create some fun garlands and banners. Or you can use these as ornaments on the Christmas tree. You can put these onto cards. There's just so many different ways that you can create your bird. So I'm just going to ask if there's any questions and because I wasn't able to look while I was demonstrating to see if you had any questions about how to create your own beautiful garland. And of course on the project for my Halloween bird, I just used some yarn that I had and I will just keep attaching more birds on to create my garland.